Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and this is my DIY and home channel, just my vlog channel where I do kind of whatever I want. So today we are going to be finally building out my walk, or not walk-in, what is this called? A reach-in. <laughs> It's called a reach-in closet. It's one of those closets where it has like the sliding doors and you know, behind the doors you have a, a closet system. So when we first moved in, we had just single wire shelves going across the middle of the closet and it worked for a long time <laughs> until it didn't. So there was one fateful day where suddenly, I don't know what happened. There's still no explanation necessarily, but suddenly everything in my closet collapsed the entire shelf came down and i can't even say it was because it had too much weight on it but that could definitely you know i had it filled with clothes and i had stuff on top so now that i think about it something to do with that i'm sure <laughs> and then a few weeks later the same exact thing happened to daniel's closet so we're thinking maybe like the house shifted or something happened like that because it was very strange that they both did it within weeks of each other but anyway it's been a long time coming but we finally are ready to build out the custom closet situation we're gonna do. I don't have plans for it to be too intense, but I would really like to insert some shelving in here. That was like the main thing that I really wanted is to have a shelving unit down the middle. And then we have some space over on this side where it would be very easy to put some shelves and then it's the same thing on the other side. So that's kind of uh, where I was going and I did a lot of searching on Pinterest. I did find one video that was very helpful in sort of designing what I wanted. Um, but everything else, I kind of just flew by the seat of my pants and hoped for the best. So as far as materials go, I went to the store thinking that I was going to just get like cabinet grade pre-sanded plywood. But with that, <laughs> you are going to have to prime paint and do a coat of polyurethane. You know, if you were to do it right. Scuff proof and just the longevity would be much longer if you did all of those steps. And I was just thinking, I've been waiting for months for this to get done, like literally months, to finally have the energy to do this. And I want it to be done. And I'm thinking that I can do it all probably in one or two days. So it's a weekend project for me this weekend. And I will probably tackle Daniel's side because he has the exact same closet situation just on the opposite side of mine. So we'll probably do his like next weekend or something like that. But I wanted to do mine as the guinea pig to make sure that I liked the process. So when we went to go pick up the plywood, we found some actually pre prefabricated or pre-painted plywood and it is like a pressed board situation like very similar to ikea furniture so we found that and it was already finished so it had a white finish on it so we wouldn't have to do any priming painting or sealing and that kind of just sounded better it was double the price i will say it was a lot more expensive than the original plan but even so doing this on my own is still a fraction of the cost of getting a custom closet built even through ikea there's lots of like diy closet situations out there where you tell them everything you want and they put together a kit and send it to you and give you all the measurements those were running about minimum 800 dollars and for all of the materials today i spent about a little over 300 dollars so together both of our closets would still be cheaper than doing one closet system that's pre-made by another company where basically they make all the cuts for you and have all the hardware holes, etc. But I know how to build things, so I feel pretty confident at this point that it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna be able to do this just fine. So you saw in the inspo photos that the shelf system was right in the center. I wanna do exactly the same thing. So I just need to mark the center of the wall, you know, going all the way up. And then um, that will sort of be the framework for everything else to be built around it. And yeah, I'm pretty excited and let's do this.
Okay, I was able to put up the brace for the side, the brace for the middle, and the brace for the other side. And with Daniel's help, I put up this shelf here. And now I'm just gonna screw in the shelf down into the wood because these are two by fours uh, just from some scraps that I had and I needed to use this because the gap is just a little bit too big if I was to use these. These are a three quarter pine. So with these, it's just a little bit of extra width on them. And then it was time to install the sidewalls of the shelving unit, which was super annoying. And because we weren't following the plans, like well, there wasn't actually a plan, we were kind of just like winging it and we were so confused by the level. It was a mess, but we basically were able to screw in sideways through that small brace that we installed and then top down, as you can see displayed here. Okay, we're ending day one of the closet redo because I don't think I have a small enough level to go into here or it's somewhere in the garage or something. I need, I need to find it. And it's getting late and I don't really want to do this anymore. So we ran into some issues because the situation, like the um, inspiration I was going off of was a time lapse that I found. And you know, there's no like written instructions or anything like that. So it was a little frustrating and interesting getting to this point, but it does look very good. And I think tomorrow is gonna to be a lot easier because it's just putting in the shelves. Like these like side pieces were a little bit annoying because they are floating. And so it was a little bit of maneuvering and I did need more than one person. So shout out to Daniel for helping me with that. But tomorrow I should be okay to do this on my own, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, I will see you tomorrow. Okay, good morning, everybody. So I'm back in the exact same spot wearing the same sweater. This morning I secured in the sides of this unit to this piece right here. And I screwed in this one, this brace. These are braces basically, just to help hold the shelves, like the weight of the shelves. And it wasn't in my original plan to put a brace on every single one of these shelves, but as I mentioned, we had to sort of shift because of the way that we are building this. It's a little bit different than the person that I was following. And I left off last night saying that I couldn't find an, like a small level. And then I remembered that your iPhone has a level on it. And I'll show you what it looks like when it is level. It just says green, like it just um, basically just says zero. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Let me show you up close. There, zero. So I'm just gonna use that because I've used it in the greenhouse a few times and it works just fine. So I guess that's level, it says zero. I don't know, I trust this a little bit less in the bubble situation, but I don't know where the thing is. So what I do when I'm putting these on, I did the same thing with the plant wall. I put in a screw into the stud and then I don't sink it in like all the way. So I make it like a little bit loose so that this could move if I wanted to. Then I get it level and once it's level, I can put in the screws on either side. And they're not in studs, so they're not really doing that much. It's just like holding the wood there. Um, but that's probably not helping with any weight distribution because it's just going straight through the drywall. So for the sides here, I'm also putting screws um, in this piece into the braces just to hold it all together. And because I'm kind of going in blind, I'm just getting the tape measure and measuring down however many feet. So for this one, it'll be two feet down and then just sort of guessing where to put the screws along this little one by four. So you can see there's two right there and we're gonna do two more probably in this general area. So lots of shadows. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this. It's a little bit more important for me to be able to get it right. So hold on a second. And then we just repeat for the other side. All the braces are in and I've run into a situation where the bottom one would only make the shelf like this deep if that and I honestly can't think of a reason I would need a shelf that deep so I'm thinking I'm just gonna have four shelves 
and then have the last one just be extra deep like I don't know what I would put in it maybe our sheets and stuff I don't honestly I don't know but I kind of imagined this being like folded storage for jeans or sweaters and things like that I'm sure that it'll evolve and turn into something else. I really, I don't really know what it's going to be. Oh, I do know that one of them, probably this shelf, like the eye level one for me, is gonna be my jewelry shelf because I want to have all of my stuff like out <laughs> so that I can actually see them because so much of my jewelry is just like in little cases and like little compartments and I can't see it all. So I wanted to have a dedicated jewelry space. But other than that, I think it's just gonna be like folded clothes and stuff. Maybe some bins like that slide out, some baskets and stuff. But yeah, okay, so now I need to install these. If you ever find yourself working on projects alone, clamps are going to be your best friend. So I just got back from the store and I grabbed these two clamps because I was just needing some extra support holding this up. Even if you did have an, another person working on this with you, I would still suggest using the clamps because it's really hard to hold something in the exact right spot while someone is screwing something in or just like, you know, messing about. So this way I was able to take my new level, I bought a smaller one. I was able to take this and put it onto the shelf going this way to make sure that it was going the right, uh, the right way, to make sure it was level this way. Okay, see this is hard for me to explain, but um, you want it to be level on the, wait, what is the, there's the X axis and the Y axis, right? And then like the, the Z axis, is that, well anyway. I don't know. The Y axis is here, the X axis is here. So you want it to be level on the X axis, and then you also want it to be level on the, the 3D axis. <laughs> We're done with the math conversation. <laughs> so now I just need to put in some screws in right here, and this might actually be a little bit tough because I have, oh no, I can move that a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna screw those in to secure it. friends my inner shelving unit is done and I'm pretty happy with it I will say it looks very good it's gonna look a lot better when there's caulk on it because there's obviously gaps like it's not a factory made situation like there's gonna be you know situations where things didn't line up perfectly, which is fine. You can very easily cover that up with just a, like a bead of white caulk. So there's that. I wanted to show you the rods that I got. So the rod that I got is adjustable closet rod and there's two poles in here, which are a little over three feet each. And I don't need anything longer than three feet in there. Like, actually, I think one of them is like, like one side is, Th a little over three feet and one side is a little bit less than three feet so this is not perfectly centered like i thought i mean that's kind of something that i should always expect to happen like it's like half an inch off which is fine but uh yeah so i just need to find a way to cut them and when i was at the store i should have bought like a pipe cutter but i do have like an all-purpose cutter i could try to use it on but i'm kind of hesitant i kind of just want to like go to the store and get a pipe cutter which means that i'm not to go to the store again but I don't know. I might save that for later and then just while I have the energy, do the side shelves. So I thought that I was going to do side shelves all along here, but then I was thinking, and this side is going to be a double rod situation. So I'm going to have a rod up here and then a rod down here. And then over here, I'm going to have just one and I'll have like all my dresses and longer things over here. And so yeah, this side will be like shirts and pants and like I guess I could put short dresses on it if I have one that's short enough to fit there. But I was just thinking that this area is gonna have clothes in it. Like this is gonna be like the bulk clothing area. So I just don't think that it makes sense to put shelves all along there. And honestly, it's less work for me. 
But this side, I always wanted to do some sort of shoe rack and like I can't have my clothes all the way up against here anyway because we have the electric box and like you don't want, I don't know, I'm sure it's fine, but like I just didn't want to have a bunch of clothes like sandwiched on top of it. So I'm going to do, I think, three shelves down here so that I have a place to put shoes. I do have a lot of shoes. Shoes need a spot and it's a closet and that was pretty much the whole point. I could definitely also put shoes in these sections if I wanted. Like I might even, like since this bottom section is so big, to make it seem more intentional, I could put like, you know, a shelf right through the middle and then like dividers. I don't really know. That might be like a future thing that I do if I need even more shoe storage. But um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about it. This whole situation was very time consuming and not fun. <laughs> but now that that is done, I think everything else is just gonna be very easy because it's just screwing in supports and then setting the shelf on top of the supports and then screwing it in and like from the top. So it's it'll, it'll be very easy. There's gonna be no guesswork in that. Um, but I do have to cut the shelves. I have 11 inch depth of this same material. This is 15 inch depth. And I also bought 11 inch depth for the side shelves. I might not actually even use all of the side shelves that I bought. So we might even be able to return some, but I am going to, I am keeping track of like how much we're spending on this so that I can give you like, if you want to do this with the same materials, you can do it because this is basically like a closet kit that you would buy. Like it's the same materials. I think they'd send you. I think the screws <laughs> would possibly be ones that would like sink and maybe they'd give you like a plug or something to hide the screws. I don't really know how all of that would work. That's the only thing that I'm like kind of regretting is that all of these screws are visible and the screws that I bought are not really that great at countersinking. Yeah, but then again, I wouldn't really wood fill it because it has like this like plastic veneer cover on it. So I don't really know how that would even work. So I guess it's the best I could do. But when we do Daniel's side, we've learned a lot from this process and we'll probably use different screws for his side just so that it can like sink in and maybe we can put like caulk over the holes. I don't really know, but you can't see them like just looking. I mean, you can see the ones that are on the back. There's gonna be clothes in it. I don't know. I'm not really, like I'm a perfectionist in some things, but other things I'm like, no one's gonna see that. Like these screws on the side are gonna be covered with clothes. Like you're never gonna see it, but maybe it's not the most professional look, but like you're never gonna see it. So like, does it even matter? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna cut three shelves for the side and we're gonna install them and then we will figure out the rod situation. Okay, I wanted to show you the true magic that is using caulk on projects like this. So I had really big gaps in all of this, if you will remember. And now it honestly looks so seamless. There are no cracks. It's all closed in and it looks absolutely beautiful. I'm so happy that I decided to do that. Um, and I wanted to also update you on this situation with the shelves. So the, the wood is actually too wide for this section. So I'm having to cut it again. And I really didn't want to do that because this plywood is not fun to cut, but I only have to do it three times. So hopefully it, it won't be that bad. We will just have to see. I did bring in one of the shelves to see like how it would fit because I wanted it to be a really tight fit. And then I ended up like making it too tight of a fit and I really screwed up my wall. Like, okay, I now have two holes in my wall. So I don't know. I'm officially going to hold off on doing the shelves on this side. I've officially decided that um, even though this is what I measured to do the shelves, I am still gonna just do them over here. And it's now 5.14, so we're getting into like the end of the day. And I really wanted to finish this today because I am just like done. But I, I think that I will. I just might work on it like late into the night. I don't know. I think another couple of hours and I'll be done. And the caulk, it, it um, dries in like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something it said. And I still need to do other sections, but I'm going to be adding some braces underneath here. So I don't want to do that until I have it all done over there. But I just remembered that I need to do this edge here because you can see there's, well, I don't know if you can see, but yeah, there's a little, little bit of a gap there. So I'm gonna do that really quick and then I'm gonna go finish cutting the wood because hopefully my battery is recharged.
okay, so my little shoe shelves are done and I am so pleased with them. They are so cute. I honestly was thinking that they're a bit tall for shoes. Like normally shoes are, they don't have shelves that tall, <laughs> but you know, cutting them was not fun. And I guess in the future, if I ever feel the need to fix it up, I can always cut more shelves and then just like attach them like underneath here. I don't really know, but what I do know is that it looks really good. There were some pretty significant gaps. It was a very big gap. And I might even come in tomorrow after the cock dries to do more because the gap <laughs> was huge. But I'm actually quite shocked that I got it closed, but like that is the magic. It's like the duct tape of building with wood and like, I don't know, like built in things. Like it just makes everything look so good. It was one of those things that I always thought like, uh, eh, you could probably go without it, but it really does make, it just elevates the project. It just makes it look really good. Down there, well, yeah, again, just this entire thing, I'm probably gonna have to do one more layer, but I want it to dry and like settle in because the gap was big. <laughs> and the last thing really is to just hang up the rods. And of course I need to paint this, these two pieces of wood on the sides. Those need to be painted probably just the same color as the closet or something. I'm going to do that later. And it might be one of those things that I say I'm going to do later. And then I never actually do. Anyway, I put up the supports here because um, up here, I don't know what I said, like if I told you what I'm gonna do with up there, but I'm planning on using it for like extra blanket storage because we have just so many extra blankets and we do use them, but just like not all the time. They're just really for when guests are here. So I'm gonna put that stuff up there and maybe even like my winter clothing storage, I don't really know, but I'm really happy to have that space like accessible to me um, and have it like be out of my eyesight because like when I'm looking at this, like from back here, okay, I guess you can see it, but it's not that bad, right? It's not that bad. <laughs> right, the next thing, oh yes, the rods. So I bought the rods, it's an expandable rod, so it came with two pieces that you slide in together, so it kind of like telescopes out, but I don't need that, so I just bought two of them. So I have four of these, so whenever we do Daniels, we'll only have to buy one more pack. Basically, this is just gonna slip into the hard the, the the wall thing let me get that this right here the closet flange set and i got bronze because these were bronze my original plans had them be black but like honestly it's not that <laughs> noticeable of a difference i mean i can tell like looking at it but i doubt that it really shows up on camera and it's gonna matter even less when the clothes are on it so now, this is a little bit intimidating figuring this part out because I need to figure out like how tall I want this um, and like where exactly it's gonna sit because it has to be a certain, you know, measurement out from the wall because obviously the hanger is gonna have to go on it. So I'm gonna go grab a hanger and then lay it against the wall flat and see sort of what distance I need to do. I was able to put this one up and I was able to trim these with our multi-tool grinder and it works out great lots of sparks but it cuts it <laughs> so i've already cut two of them so the top layer here and then there's going to be a bottom layer right underneath it and i brought up some clothes that are like average length so that is going to help me kind of decide where to place it but literally all i have left is <laughs> installing this piece right here and this piece right here and then i'm freaking chilling and I'm done, and I am so excited. just after eight o'clock and I'm officially done, like done, done with this closet. And this has been a long time coming. It's been such a labor of love. I'm so happy that this is done. <sighs> I feel so good about this. I'm really, really excited to start using it. I'm going to just chill for the rest of the night and start filling it up tomorrow with all my clothes and all my stuff and hopefully get all of this stuff off of my dresser, um, it just feels really good. 
I'm very proud of myself. This was one of those things that felt very daunting and then I just decided, let's freaking do it. And I've learned a lot. Daniel's closet will probably look a lot better than mine, <laughs> but I'm still very happy with it. Like, okay, I will see you guys tomorrow as I'm filling up my closet. Okay, so I spent some time yesterday filling up the closet. It was so nice to finally bring all of my clothes back up here. And I have a massive load of laundry to do, so this is by no means the entire thing. But I have filled it up pretty nicely so far. And I'm just so excited to finally have this space back. It has been so irritating and just inconvenient to have my clothes sort of spread around the entire house. So having this area to hang my stuff to eventually organize my jewelry, stack my shoes, just have a place where everything has a place. <laughs> I really am so excited and thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I hope that this inspired you to try tackling doing your own custom closet, whether that be doing exactly the same situation that I did or going out and buying a kit, whatever it may be. I just hope that it inspires you to make your spaces more functional for you because that is the entire point of, you know, living somewhere, owning a house and whatever else is making the spaces work for you. And I feel so glad that I did this, truly. It's been such a fun experience and we will be tackling Daniel's side of the closet relatively soon. Might take a week off and do other things, but yeah, that will be coming soon too. I'm not gonna do like a full recording of that, but I will show you once it's done. Now that I have all of this space up on the top shelf, you will see me do my organizing my life part two video where I organize our blankets and more craft supplies. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to chatting with you guys in the comments down below. Bye.